Mortal Kombat Advance, released in December of 2001 for the Game Boy Advance, was purported to be a Game Boy Advance adaptation of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which is the updated version of Mortal Kombat 3 that brought back the palette swap ninjas that were missing from the initial version. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, by the way, had gotten home conversions for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis 16-bit home consoles, and both versions were not only respectable ports of the game given the obvious hardware limitations, but they were also given a couple ninja characters to sweeten the deal. Mortal Kombat Advance used the 16-bit variant of Ultimate Mortal Kombat as the template, and one would surmise that a 32-bit handheld could easily take what worked on their weaker predecessors and recreate the experience pretty well, maybe even enhance the experience. But as time would prove, this is not the case. Mortal Kombat Advance was deemed so wretched of a game that it garnered a score of zero from the old Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine, the first time such a score was given to a game by the once esteemed publication. And I'd imagine that a lot of those 1 out of 10s you see on the game's GameFAQs review page could easily have been zero out of 10s if not for the site's unexplainable fear of the number zero. Mortal Kombat Advance, without question, is the worst portable Mortal Kombat game I've come across, and that's taking into account the Mortal Kombat games on the original Game Boy, which were pretty dreadful in their own right. But somehow, some way, Mortal Kombat Advance manages to outsuck those games on a cataclysmic scale. But before we get into that particular part of the fun, let's look at the few positives that Mortal Kombat Advance has to offer. For one thing, the visuals in Mortal Kombat Advance are actually quite nice. While the character sprites are rather small in comparison to the stages, they do animate rather nicely when it comes to running and walking and doing basic attacks at the very least. And while the game boasts a few stages, they are nicely recreated onto the platform. And of course, on certain stages, you could uppercut your opponent to a higher level, just like in the arcade original. Oh, there are some minor bits of animation missing during the endurance rounds, for example, when you defeat your first opponent, he or she is automatically replaced with a second opponent almost instantaneously without any transitional animation or anything of the sort. There's no explosion to destroy the other body or anything like that, they just swap the sprites. Likewise, defeating Shao Kahn does not garner any sort of endgame animation, but rather the fight just ends as you would a normal fight, and you get the ending afterwards. Still, for what it's worth, visual and Mortal Kombat Advance are pretty good for the most part. Likewise, the sound is also fairly decent, although probably on a lesser level. There's a few musical pieces and those come off some sounding like nothing more than higher-end MIDI interpretations than anything worthwhile, but even so, for higher-end MIDI files, they're not quite bad. Sound effects are on the light side, some tinny sounding sounds and a sizable amount of voice bites, but otherwise serviceable, nothing to really rip your ears off or anything. So... This, this, this is where I turn into Mr. Negative. Because the one thing that Mortal Kombat Advance completely, utterly, and royally fucks up is the gameplay. This is perhaps the most objective thing I could say about Mortal Kombat Advance. The gameplay itself is pretty broken. The AI is ridiculously on the defensive, even more so than in the arcade version. And as such, any and all attempts to attack will be blocked constantly, even on the easiest difficulty setting. Trying to impose any semblance of proper strategy will not work because you're always getting countered quite a bit, and a computer likes to play some tricks that are humanly impossible. And it's not like I play like a boob in these games either. I've played other Mortal Kombat games, and while I freely admit that I'm not the greatest, I don't consider myself to be amazing or anything, I could win a few rounds against the computer, even lucked out and beat the games every so often. But those games also work the way they were supposed to, and there's fun to be had with those Mortal Kombat games, especially with a couple pals. The same cannot be said for Mortal Kombat Advance, where it's a struggle just to beat the first opponent who is always going to be Scorpion, by the way, no matter what tower you pick. As such, the only means of beating said opponents is to lull them into their corner and spam away with basic punches and kicks and stuff like that. And even that will only get you so far until three or four rounds in where the AI discover it has a spine and fights back with tactics and maneuvers that you can't possibly pull off. When you have to resort to cheap tactics like this in order to win or fall back on a cheat device to get any semblance of progress, it does a game little favors and only accentuates how frustrating of an experience playing Mortal Kombat Advance happens to be. Not to mention some of these moves are really wonky, not really working this, the way they're supposed to work, or just animate or look funny and strange. And the fighting generally feels looser with floaty jumps and physics and also collision detection that seemingly works when it feels like working. 
presumably to your disadvantage. Let's talk about control in Mortal Kombat Advance. The Game Boy Advance obviously has four buttons, two face buttons and two trigger buttons. As such, your buttons comprise punch, kick, block, and run. Yeah, they had to take the high and low variants of your punches and or kicks and combine them into one button each. So that means some move commands will undoubtedly be altered to conform to this constrained control scheme. Fine, I'll live, it's not a big deal. It'll feel a bit nerfed, but whatever. If you are a competent developer, emphasis on the word competent, you might be able to make it work. Unfortunately, control in Mortal Kombat Advance is anything but competent. You press buttons, they work. You try inputting move commands, they have a tendency to lag. It's one thing when you have a hard time trying to pull off a simple spear command, but when you're struggling to get out even a simple roundhouse kick or a sweep kick, that becomes a problem. Like I said before, Mortal Kombat Advance is based off the 16-bit conversion of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which basically gave you some extra ninjas that weren't playable in the arcade original. Now you'll notice a mystery box that's labeled as such. The mystery box is where you can play as one of the three hidden fighters depending on which combat tower you decide to beat. If you beat the second tower, you'll get a palette swap of Scorpion known as Human Smoke. Defeat the third tower to play as the Centaur boss Motaro, and defeat the fourth tower to play as Shao Kahn. Okay, in theory, not a bad idea. Bit of a hassle to put up with the shit gameplay, but you get some semblance of a reward at the end. But you're missing a trick here, because you can only have one unlocked fighter at a time. So if you unlock Human Smoke by beating the second tower, and you pick Human Smoked, and you beat the third tower, Human Smoke is replaced with Motaro, and in order to get Smoke back, you have to beat that second tower again. There's no way to have all three fighters selectable at the same time, it's only one, and that's it, just one. On top of that, Mortal Kombat Advance has no battery backup or other save mechanism to retain this information. As such, you turn off your Game Boy Advance and those rewards go bye-bye, meaning you have to play through the whole thing all over again to unlock those guys. Well, unlock one of them and replace him with someone else, and it's not even worth it. The game doesn't even have the Shao Kahn treasures that Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 sported, where you could just pick your prize depending on what tower you beat, varying from bonus fights to fatalities. Mind you, it's not much of a surprise given everything else, but holy crap, this just feels bare bones. A couple two-player modes requiring another human being with a copy of this game, god forbid, and the broken single-player arcade mode, that's just sad. But perhaps what's even sadder here is that this thing came out in December of 2001. A couple of months prior, there was another fighting game that graced the Game Boy Advance. You might have heard of it. It's a little game called Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo Revival. An amazing little game because not only did they manage to get a version of Street Fighter 2 that plays extremely well given the limitations of the Game Boy Advance, but it's a conversion of what was then considered the definitive version of Street Fighter 2 in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which never saw release on the Nintendo consoles. And on top of that, there were various modes of play, things you could do and unlock, and it was a pretty packed package overall. Mortal Kombat Advance is the other side of that coin, based off a so-so conversion of a so-so arcade game, with controls that only work the way they're supposed to half the time, and I'm being generous in that regard. Collision detection that will do its damnedest to not detect collision unless it's inconvenient to you, a wonky fighting engine that feels rather disponent, and quite frankly, no real reason to put any time or effort into this game. Look, in all honesty, I'm not really telling you anything that you haven't already heard from many other people, and for those of you who have ignored this game for all these years, keep on ignoring said game. If you want a good portable Mortal Kombat experience, get Ultimate Mortal Kombat on the Nintendo DS. That one's pretty good, it even has Puzzle Kombat, which is a great puzzler. As far as Mortal Kombat Advance goes, don't bother, just leave it in the pit. No one will notice.